Walking simulators have had to fight their way first into recognition and then into acceptance in the gaming mainstream. The term walking simulator has been used for games where there's a lot of downtime, it's been used when there's minimal action, or when the game's just a bit boring. But walking simulators are one of the most effective ways of telling a story in a video game, and actually in any medium. For those not familiar with the term, I'll give you the briefest explanation possible. Uh, walking simulators are games that don't feature traditional elements in a game, like platforming, or combat, or crafting, or racing, or dancing, or farming, or goating? You get, you get the idea. Abzu is a good example of a walking simulator. Well, actually it's more like a swimming simulator, but check out that video if you want to see what I mean. It's a game where you as the player can kind of just watch the game's events happen around you. Another good example is, as you might have guessed, the game I'm about to review. Wait a minute! So, yeah, maybe just stay here for now, actually? Okay, anyway, here we go. Tacoma is the second game from Fulbright, whose 2013 debut Gone Home pushed forward and arguably defined the walking simulator. Gone Home is an incredible piece of passive storytelling where the only interaction in the game comes from the player unfolding the story bit by bit. I could go on about how it does this so well, the depth and the emotion that it tells in its story, but Tacoma is very similar to Gone Home. But even space. So I'll just get going with this, I guess, as that's the point of this video anyway, actually. So okay, I'm gonna review this now, right, seriously, let's go. Amy is a contractor for space station operator Venturus, who own a number of stations orbiting the Earth. Venturus sends Amy to the space station Tacoma to investigate several distress signals coming from the station. You board Tacoma to find it deserted and with no known whereabouts of the crew. Fortunately, Venturus, being the future dystopian mega corporation that it is, uses constant augmented reality tracking of everyone on the station. And by using this AR tracking system, Amy can piece together prior events to try and figure out what happened on Tacoma. The AR recordings use positional data to create these 3D holograms inside Tacoma. And this is the heart of Tacoma. I'm now talking about the game, not the space station. I hope that doesn't start to get confusing. But you scrub through archived AR footage to understand what the crew members were saying and doing before you got there. Crew members will also pull up personal logs, which you can access to retrieve more bits of data. This might be an email from another colleague, voice messages from people back on Earth, that kind of thing. You might also find a code that gets you into their personal quarters where you can find out why they joined the Tacoma station or if they want to stay there. How much you go digging into a character's backstory is completely up to you. The first main clue as to what happened on Tacoma comes during an early recording. The crew are celebrating when something collides with the station, stopping the air supply and removing all external communications. That sets the premise for the rest of the game as you move through Tacoma finding more and more recent recordings and realising what's become of the crew. As each character is nothing more than a coloured hologram, facial expressions are non-existent. The body language is there but it's very subtle. The main way Tacoma expresses its characters and tells its story is through dialogue. And it does a great job with that. The conversations flow very naturally between characters and depending on who you choose to eavesdrop on, you might find out how they're feeling and their relationships with other people on the station. With just six crew members, each one feels very distinctive and believable, and there were even a couple of times where I actually felt like I was intruding on a personal moment. And it's from things like that where Tacoma hits on this strange kind of disconnect, and I mean that in a good way, where the emotions that run through the characters feel very real, but Amy, and therefore you as the player, is cut off from it all. As the story unfolds and how much remaining oxygen there is on the station becomes quite important, you start to notice how you're several steps behind those that were there before you. And you start to take on this role of a cyber detective that's playing catch up. Now detective probably isn't the right word because there isn't really any detective work. And that's my big problem with Tacoma is that it holds your hand through the entirety of the game. So right now you're probably thinking two things. One, Actually, detective probably was the right word because that was a great segue you did right there. 
And two, didn't you say this was a walking simulator and that what made walking simulators so great was that they don't require any defined player interaction? Well, yes. You're right, dear viewer, on both accounts. But what makes a walking simulator excellent is that you are able to piece together the story as you wish. In Gone Home, for example, you're free to choose the route you take as you explore Katie's house, and each part of that house feels very unique. Tacoma steers you through four different sections of the station that all function as their own kind of independent but very similar looking levels. You move to the biomedical module, let's say, and you plug your personal data pad thingy into the wall. And then it starts uploading some data. I'm not actually sure what it's doing while it's in there. But while it does that thing, you go and explore the area and recover the archived AR footage. And in each of these recordings, you can listen to the crew members to understand the plot, you can recover the personal logs to learn more about the characters, and you can find the occasional code to unlock a door. And this is, at its core, I guess the same as Gone Home, but it feels a lot more rigid in Tacoma. One of the reasons why that is, is that there are symbols at the bottom of the recording that show whose personal log is open, which basically just tells you where you need to be um, at any one time and completely removes any sense of discovery. Once you recover a personal log, I found this pattern to start developing. You can read a message from a coworker that might suggest the relationship the two of them have, you might read an email that infers why they're on board Tacoma, or you might find a clue to enter their personal quarters or their office and find out about their relationship with Venturis. I don't want to keep comparing Tacoma to Gone Home, but it's also very hard not to when they're the only two games by the same developer. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that walking through Tacoma and uncovering its story felt more systematic. Now perhaps that's intentional. You travel to Tacoma with a job to do and you don't have much time to do it in. You are aboard a space station which, to my knowledge, although I will admit I've never been in one, are laid out in a plain and structured format. But I think honestly this is more me clutching at straws than just admitting that Tacoma, even though it's only two hours long, can feel a bit repetitive. So while it tells an exciting and interesting story, I can't say that it left the same impact on me as Gone Home. But its characters are rich and like Gone Home, Tacoma excellently captures the eerie feeling of being an outsider trying to piece together the remnants of a story that otherwise might be forgotten.